I was living in Arizona at the time, and um, there was an open casting call uh, for a police officer. And I had mentioned to my boyfriend, I'm like, you look like a cop. You ought to, like, this is an open casting call. I knew what an open casting call is because remember I told you in junior high someone mentioned an open casting. That's all I knew about the business or what. So he said, oh, no, I don't have a personality for that. I could never do that. I'm way too shy. He said, but now that I think about it, how come you never did that? You kind of have that gleaming smile, you know, that outgoing personality. And he said, you're 25 years old now. Go do it. I said, well, I don't know how. I don't know, like, how you get involved. I don't. He said, find out. So I knew one guy that was a, an aspiring actor. So I called him, and he made it sound really simple, and this is funny. He said, you just go get your pictures taken, then you send it to 20 agents, and two out of the 20 should call you, and then you have an interview, and hopefully one will sign you. I did that in a week, and a week later, an agent called, and on that day, I got signed to a SAG agent. So I was like, this is easy. A week later, I went on the Power Rangers audition. And at the time, the audition was called Dino Rangers. It wasn't Power Rangers, it was Dino Rangers. Now, this is funny. Trini was supposed to be afraid of her own shadow, very insecure, and no zero karate. She, she wasn't supposed to know karate. So I went to the audition a week later, and I was terrified. Because I was thinking, I don't know how to act. I just, I was going to try this, but I thought, like, I'm gonna do this for five, 10 years, I'll never get an agent, I'll never get an audition, and then I get to say I tried, but I don't have to actually do anything. And I got the role because of my karate experience. So I, they, I did the audition, but then they were like, well, you said you're a third degree black belt. That's kind of exaggerating. Because what's funny is when I auditioned, because I was so scared, I played off of that. I really was shaking. I really was afraid of my own shadow in there. I was just like, oh my God, I don't belong here. So I played it that way. And as I was walking out, I think they knew I was nervous and I wasn't acting. So as I was walking out, they wanted to know like, hey, wait, by the way, like, why'd you exaggerate on your resume and say you're a third degree black belt? And then I knew, I got you. Like, now you're in my round. Now you want to talk to me about something I actually know. So I, I stayed in character, and I was still, like, kind of scared, but I already knew. And they said, um, can you do something that will impress us like a third degree? If we call you, and he said, call you out on it. And I thought, oh, man, you don't even know. So I did this little bow, and I acted like I was scared. I mean, I was, like, shaking, and when I came up, I was a different animal. And then I just did this performance that was like off the charts, tried to scare the hell out of them. So there was a table like this, a banquet table, but it was lower. And I remember getting right up to it and doing a kick like this right over the table. So my foot literally went over the table and stopped like just inches from the producer's head. Wham! And he, so when I was done, their mouth was like, and I still didn't know the show was about karate or anything. I just wanted to show off. Well, the funny part of this whole thing is that they must have auditioned for a month, callbacks, and they kept calling me back. And it was like a process of elimination. And I remember being like pretty cocky about my karate and wondering, who the heck am I competing against? Like who, what girl knows karate like me? Like, I don't understand. They told me later on, we knew you were hired immediately we just didn't want to let you know because we didn't want you to ask for more money or like, right? So I was like, good one. So I got the, the part. Um, we all did. They, I don't know if anybody knows this. They actually had three groups of five audition. Uh, the final audition was three groups of five. And they said, based on your energy with each other, we're going to pick one group. We're not going to enter. We're not going to take from here and there. So I remember we like bonded real quick. Like, hey, let's get to know each other real fast, right? And the energy was good. So they picked us um, and then I did the pilot. After I did the pilot, um, we did some rehearsals. We were around production, like the production office a lot. And I had to make a choice. Do I wanna pursue this acting thing? Because just because I landed something and it got picked up, 
to me, I was thinking, this doesn't guarantee anything. This isn't long term. We didn't know the show was going to be big. And even if it was big, uh, the contract was the contract. That's a different thing than, than being famous. That's a contract. So if it says in your contract that for any reason whatsoever, at any time, we could just say goodbye to you, they could. And I was like, I'm 25 years old. I live in Arizona. I don't live in LA. I got to move to LA. I got to get an apartment. I got I to say goodbye to my boyfriend who lives there. I lived with him forever. I was like, this is a big move. So I decided, you know what? If I was passionate about acting, and I told you, I had just started. It wasn't like I, that was my passion. I was like, I'm not an aspiring actor. This, this kind of fell in my lap. I'm going to bow out. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go. Truth be told, if I had to do it all over again, for the experience alone, I would have done it. Now that I look back, if it was my kid, I would say drop everything and do this because you're going to look back on this and you're going to say, hey, this was a great time. Ironically, 25 years later, I get to do this and I'm flattered. But I do wish that I had had that experience of getting off an airplane. Because I remember the first trip to Austin that the Power Rangers took, the plane landed and fans broke barriers to get to them. They rushed the plane. They couldn't get off the airplane. And I remember seeing it on TV, being really happy for them. But feeling like, damn, that's like an experience, like the Beatles, you know? That's not that I'm comparing us to Beatles, but you know what I'm saying? I think fear, insecurity, just the unknown is really what kept me from jumping in full bore and saying I want to go all the way with this. But one of my lifetime goals was as a kid when I saw Bruce Lee, I remember making that decision like I want to do that. I want to do karate and I want to do it on a big screen one day, you know. That's so for me, even though it was just this whole thing was a bleep on the radar. I can at least say, yeah, I, I kind of did it a little bit. You know, it was something. When I got to the set, I didn't, I had no idea how to act. I wasn't sure, like, are they going to use a lingo that I don't know? Like, are they going to say something that, like, a word I'm going to be like, I don't even know what that means. I got through it, but in the pilot, there's a, um, a line that I say, and it's almost a question. I say, well, riding a flying bike? because Rita rode a flying bike. So we're going through the description of Rita and I say, well, riding a flying bike? And the director said, do that again, but like higher voice. So I was like, well, riding a flying bike? He's like, no joke. We had to have done it 50 times. And my voice had to get higher each time. So it was hideous. So by the time I finished, they finally got it. It was like, well, riding a flying bike? And I hated it. I was so insecure about it. So now we get to view it for the first time. And all of us rangers are together. We're in the room, the ADR room. We're watching a big screen. And when that, I was just like, oh man, that sounds horrible. I look stupid. I hated it. And Saban, I'm Saban, was standing right next to me. I begged him with everything I had to please let's just shoot that over. I can't. I was so scared that my friends, my family were going to be like, you suck. <laughs> I was like, no, that's. And I, I'll never forget. I kind of, again, I wish I would have taken these these little hints because the man himself, I remember, look, he said, that's the best part of the whole thing. And I thought, not the karate, like not all the, but I remember him personally saying, are you kidding? That's the best part of the whole thing. And I thought, I didn't even know how to like digest that, right? So I just, but now when I, I still cringe when I say, I'm like, oh, that sounds so stupid. But evidently he liked it. When they blew up, like I said, we were pretty tight. I felt like, you know, we, we bonded. And I loved every one of them. They, we were like, okay, this is good. We're doing this together. Then when I left, I never told them I was leaving. That was kind of one of the things is I felt like if I say I'm gonna try to renegotiate my contract, they might get the idea that they should too. And then if, if it goes bad for me, it might go bad for them. So I don't want to influence anybody. I just want to, this is business. I'm just going to do this one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know that I would have done it that way again. Maybe I should have expressed it that way. Like, hey, this is what I'm going to do, but you can't do this. But just walking, them just finding out from someone else one day that Audrey left and she's not coming back. Uh, that wasn't cool. I, I wish I could have done that part over.